Hello, and welcome back to City Skylines, Pittsburgh. In today's episode of City Skylines, Pittsburgh, we'll be heading deep into the South Hills suburbs to complete Pittsburgh's light rail system, known to locals simply as the T. Starting off the episode today, I'm quickly building these neighborhoods out in the South Hills using a speed building method that I picked up from watching Infrastructurist in their new kind of Feria series on YouTube. I'm using a random selection hotkey to quickly place these homes from a Pittsburgh collection that I created before recording the episode. I've linked that whole collection down in the description below if you want to see some of the homes that I'm using here. But basically right now, I'm just trying to create a decent amount of density in these neighborhoods and start filling them out a bit. It's not quite as densely built as the real life city, but as you'll see in a moment here, I'm starting to have to be more mindful of the game limits as I start to approach the end of the recreation stage of the project. If you're new to the channel, I'm building out the city of Pittsburgh in city skylines in order to transform it with urbanist city planning techniques to try to see how the city could be revitalized in the future. Now I'm starting to near the limit of how much I can actually build as far as the road network goes, but as you can see here I thankfully have most of it pre-planned out. I still have quite a bit of room left to go with buildings and population growth, but there's a few key neighborhoods remaining that are a must on my list to complete. There's also a few that might have to be sacrificed for the sake of performance and game limits though. I hope at the end of the recreation part of this project, I'll have a good representation of the city of Pittsburgh, which can be a base for the revitalization stage, with plenty of opportunities to experiment with everything from realistic to radical city planning changes, and improvement projects like transit improvements, new green spaces, to highway removals, and much more. Feel free to pause the video here for a moment as I show off some of the limits of the city and the Pittsburgh project. As you can see, I've placed about two thirds of the final amount of buildings possible, and for nodes and segments, I'm also about two thirds of the way towards reaching the game limits. There's still plenty of room to grow and detail the city out to those limits, and I'm hoping to end the first half of the project with around 160,000 population. This is my population goal for the project because I want the revitalization stage to feel like a full and alive city, but I also want to have decent enough performance that I can still record the episodes without my PC completely giving up. In past experience with build projects, like when I was recreating the city of San Francisco before I started making videos on YouTube, I found out that the population number of around 160,000 is when you kind of reach that sweet spot of performance versus population size. And I want to have this large realistic city, but in order to continue making videos and cinematic episodes like this, I do have to be mindful of the game performance as well. Thank you. 
You may have noticed in my last episode covering the neighborhood of Lawrenceville that I've started mixing in some more real life footage from Pittsburgh into the build episodes. I got out to the city over the weekend and recorded some live footage of the Silver Line light rail in the South Hills to use it as a reference for the build episode. I really wanted the transit here to be high detail and really realistic, so getting out there in person was a must for me. Along with this episode, I'll also have a companion video coming out this weekend, and that video will be showing off the entire journey of the T from South Bank Station in the suburbs to the final station downtown, Allegheny. I really recommend checking out that video after this one. It's definitely the most effort I've ever put into a video so far, and it really came out amazing. I mix a lot more of this real life footage that I grabbed with game cinematics, first person views, and Google Earth comparison shots. That video will be linked at the end screen of this one if you'd like to check it out. As you all probably know, City Skylines just went through a major update pretty recently with the new Hotels and Retreats DLC, and this is the final update that the game is planned to receive. I made sure to update to the newest version of Compatibility Report before the update, which helped to make sure all my mods were in working order so I wouldn't have any issues with my two save games. That new version of Compatibility Report is actually called Skive now. And I definitely recommend it if you like to play modded City Skylines like I do. It's created by a few of the most trusted and respected modders in the community, and it makes it really easy to find any mod issues that you might have, and keep your saves in working order. I would definitely recommend checking that out with the link in the description below. Coming up now on one of my favorite parts of today's episode, this is the Bonaire T Station. And this station is just nestled along this steep hillside of the Bonaire neighborhood. It was a real fun challenge to try to take one in game because if you're familiar with the game mechanics, it's really difficult to build along these steep slopes. You have to do a lot of work to kind of hide the ugliness that the game creates. So I use a lot of these slope profile networks along with some stair props and these PO blocks to try to create the multi-tiered platform approach it has. And I'll be showing off some real life footage of this station, but this was definitely my favorite station of the build and I think it turned out pretty great in the end. While I build out and begin to detail the tracks and various stations along the blue and silver lines of the T, I wanted to take a moment to discuss the history of this particular mode of transit in the city. The Pittsburgh light rail system spans 26.2 miles, and it serves the downtown area as well as a few of its surrounding suburbs. While it primarily operates as a subway in downtown Pittsburgh, it mostly runs at ground level with a mix of dedicated tracks and some street running tracks in the southern suburbs. The T follows a very linear route, stretching from Pittsburgh's central business district to its two terminus stations in the South Hills. 
Currently, the T is owned and operated by Pittsburgh Regional Transit, also known as PRT. What really sets the T apart is its use of the Pennsylvania trolley gauge, which is wider than the standard gauge used in most light rail systems. The actual story of the T or light rail systems in Pittsburgh begins back in 1903. Back in 1903, the Pittsburgh Railways really laid the foundation for the streetcar system that would eventually become the T. Unlike many other streetcar systems that were phased out due to the rise of automobiles, the Pittsburgh system was able to survive because of its high ridership and its dedicated tracks. In the 1960s, the Pittsburgh Railways Company, also known as PRC, which operated the streetcar system in Pittsburgh, was acquired by the Port Authority of Allegheny County. This led to the conversion of most streetcar routes to buses, leaving only a few lines in operation. This trend increased during the early 1970s, as there were plans to actually dismantle the rail system in favor of busways and a failed project known as the Skybus, which was more of a guided monorail type of system. However, community opposition arose, advocating for the preservation and modernization of the electric rail trolley system. Ultimately, the decision was made to adopt the LRT system option for the South Hills suburbs, while simultaneously developing a busway system known as BRT or Bus Rapid Transit for the eastern and western suburbs. To this day, the T continues to serve as a vital transportation link for the city, connecting downtown Pittsburgh to the southern suburbs primarily on dedicated high-speed tracks and serving a variety of stations as well as some park and ride facilities. finally reaching the end of the Pittsburgh light rail network, at least for my project version of the city. Of course I wish I could extend further into the southern neighborhoods, but with the game limitations in mind, I decided to end the blue and silver lines of the T here at South Bank Station. There is also conveniently a South Busway BRT stop here as well, which you'll see me build in just a few moments. While I put the finishing touches on this station, I wanted to quickly mention these tram assets that I'm using. I get a lot of questions about the trams I'm using in my city, and these are actually an amazing replica model of the streetcar style trams that you'll see in Pittsburgh. I commissioned these from a creator named Cristo Listo, and I've included a link in the description if you want to check them out in the Steam Workshop.
For the remainder of today's episode, I'm going to be heavily detailing this valley here known as Sawmill Run. Locals might also refer to this stretch as Route 51 from the state route that goes down the middle of the valley. This was a challenging build not only because of the extreme terrain around here, but also because of this stream that runs alongside and sometimes underneath the main road. This build was also just a ton of fun because this road is just generally pretty awful. This is definitely something you wouldn't normally want to build in City Skylines. Here you've got this high speed strode with a center turn lane and it's just lined on both sides with billboards, various industrial buildings, and used car lots. But it was actually a really fun chance to use a lot of different decals and various props and just really try to make it look like the real sawmill run or real estate route that you see going through here.
And with that, we have another episode of City Skylines Pittsburgh complete, and we become a bit closer to the revitalization stage. But before we go, I have a few other things I wanted to highlight that have been going on with the Pittsburgh project recently. First up, we have this pack of 15 Pittsburgh-themed billboards that I recently released to the workshop. Up next, we have a huge collection of Pittsburgh-themed vehicles ranging from police to fire to port authority by the creators V-Sky, Aero 404, and Apollon Driver. Next, we have this amazing new PPG Paints Arena asset by creator Checo MX. I was so happy to see this come onto the Steam Workshop, and I think you might like it in your cities too. A new skyscraper addition to the Pittsburgh skyline, and now on the Steam Workshop, KNL Gate Center is a 1960s red international style skyscraper that I recently created in Blender. I decided to create this building for the Pittsburgh project because it's a generic international style building that can fit into a lot of different cities. The k and Kate signage at the top of the building is removable using a sub mesh, so all you have to do is just rename the building and it disappears and becomes this generic red skyscraper. It was a fun one to build and I included a ton of details from the real tower in Pittsburgh. I'm especially a fan of the top of the building with these large see-through vents in the corner and the street level plaza details that I included. You can find this building right now on the Steam Workshop with a link in the description below. Even more recently, I released this large downtown parking garage asset to the Steam Workshop, and you can pick it up now if you need an oversized garage for your cities. With eight floors of parking and a ton of details, this garage will fill out a whole downtown block very nicely. And finally, we have the One Oxford Center of Pittsburgh. This skyscraper is my latest asset creation and quickly has become my favorite as well. I just completed the tower and plaza before recording the episode, and you can have early access to it now on my Patreon page. enjoyed this episode of City Skylines Pittsburgh. I want to give a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon for helping make this project possible. There's a lot more to come for the Pittsburgh project, so if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to like and subscribe below, and we'll see you in the next episode of City Skylines Pittsburgh.